Hi, and welcome to our service. If you're new here, you may be wondering who we are and what this church is all about. Well, the heart of the matter is this. We're a group of people doing our best to love God and love those around us. One of the ways we express this love is through worship, because our God is truly amazing. He created everything, great and small, and His love for us is incredible, powerful, and completely unconditional. We also spend time looking into His Word, the Bible, and receive practical teaching to guide us along His path in our everyday lives. But it doesn't end when the service is over. Throughout the week, we gather in groups to serve, pray, reach out to our community, and sometimes just to hang out and have fun. Life is full of challenges, and none of us are perfect. But we believe that's one of the reasons God has brought us together. We're all here to help and support each other through each step of life's journey, because nobody should have to travel alone. So thanks for joining us today. No matter who you are, we want you to know you are welcome. Hi and welcome to New Life Online. My name is Dave Finley. I'm the pastor at New Life Assembly here in Killarney, Manitoba. And we're so glad you've joined us for our worship program today. In just a few moments, I'm going to begin a series titled Letters from a Jail Cell, in which we look at the prison letters from the Apostle Paul and talk about freedom in Christ. I trust that you will join us for this message today and the rest of our series as it comes along. If you'd like more information about New Life Assembly, you can always connect with us by texting the word CONNECT to the number 431-400-9585, and we'll be sure to get some information out to you. Thanks so much for watching. Let's bow in prayer. Father, we pray your blessing upon this time together. We pray, God, you will speak to our hearts through the songs, through the scriptures, through the word of God. We pray that today you will speak into our lives Lord, that we will know what it is to be made free indeed. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
charged with um, first degree murder and, and found guilty of second degree murder. And that's what brought me here, 10 gold. I come from the city of New Orleans and I grew up in a very violent neighborhood and where most of my friends died before the age of 18. And, and basically I know that I escaped death through all of that, you know. I know if, if I wouldn't have came here, I'd be dead in hell somewhere. Basically out there, I had no peace, you know, and I always was wondering when I was gonna be next to be killed, you know. And it got to a point to where I really just accepted it. You know, hey, you know, I guess this is what it's supposed to be for me, you know. And I always lived my life looking looking back in a holding cell. I met the Lord Jesus, you know, while the jury was deliberating, you know, basically on my life. Twelve people had to make a decision whether I live or die. And at that point, I come to the end of my rope. I was by myself in a holding cell, and, and I heard God spoke to me. You know, and I remember what my mother always said about God, you know. If you ever in trouble, call on him. And right there, I cried out to him. And he heard my cry. Man, I have experienced a peace that surpasses understanding. You know, it, it, it makes you comfortable in the most uncomfortable situation, you know. And that's, that's, that's the difference that it has in my life. You know, I never have been at so much peace until now, you know. And it's not necessarily this place or the, the thing that happened to me is, is the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, working in me, you know, on the outside, you know, where I can experience his peace and joy, man. And I wouldn't trade it in for nothing. I've been through the Bible college, received a bachelor's degree in pastoral studies, and now I'm an MA minister. My job is to go from tier to tier and minister to guys, you know, guys who are hopeless and you know, and I, I just share the, the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. And, and it's awesome to see, you know, it impact their life and God doing to them what he done to me, you know. And it's just passing it on. And one of my favorite scriptures is Ecclesiastes 7 and 8. It says, better is the end of the thing than the beginning thereof. And goal is not the end for me. You know, I know he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all I ask to think, you know. And I believe each day I'm walking into destiny and purpose, you know. And I'm following like Abraham one step at a time. And I just want to know, I, I just want you to know that you can find freedom in Christ Jesus if you would just surrender it all to him. And I just love you and encourage you in these words by testimony. Let's give God a clap off and a praise again for what's taking place. Hallelujah. I don't think anyone really ever intends to go to jail. It's certainly not something a high school graduates write about as their future aspirations to one day end up a convict, and yet every year, sadly, some people break the law and will spend part of their lives in jail. Many times we end up in situations that we never intended ourselves to end up in. We never planned for those things to happen, and yet they did. Throughout the Bible, there are stories of many people who ended up in situations that they never planned or intended or even hoped for. Certainly when you think of Joseph, he intended to be a leader of men, and yet he ended up in a pit, sold as a slave, eventually ending up in jail, accused of rape. He never intended for that to happen. I'm sure Job never intended to be sitting and scraping the oozing sores off his body with a piece of broken pottery. That was not the plan. David was anointed to be king, he never intended to run for his life and to be hiding in caves with a bunch of lowlifes. And certainly none of us intended or thought that we would ever end up in a worldwide pandemic, getting vaccinated, wearing masks, having it affect every aspect of our lives from the youngest child 
to the person mourning the loss of a father or a husband or a wife or mother and not even so much being able to have a funeral service for them. Yes, we sometimes end up in situations that we never intended to end up in. Which of us decided or planned or intended to end up battling depression every day of our lives? Who among us decided to be a single parent or a widowed spouse or husband? Which of us decided to get involved in sports only to sit on the bench? We all planned on being the star of the game. We all planned to take the final winning shot. None of us really intended to spend our sports careers on the bench. And who of us intended or planned or thought that life is so good that we will spend a day at the end of every month trying to pay our bills on a very limited income? That's not how we saw life. Many times people end up in situations that they never intended to end up in, facing uh, problems and uh, situations that were not their plan. The Apostle Paul intended to go to Rome. He wanted to go to Rome. He pleaded with people to pray for opportunities for him to go to Rome as a missionary. He intended to go there to preach the gospel, to teach people, to help people grow in their faith. And indeed, he did go to Rome, except not as he intended. He went as a prisoner. He went and ended up in a jail cell, locked or chained to a guard facing years of imprisonment and eventually giving his life as a martyr. It's not something he planned to do or something that he intended to do. For those of you movie fans, you may recall the scene from The Shawshank Redemption where Andy and Red meet for the first time in prison. Red asks Andy, what are you in for? And Andy responds, I'm charged with killing my wife, but I didn't do it. And Randy, uh, Andy laughs and he says, uh, you'll fit right in here. No one in here ever did what they were accused of. And he asks another inmate why he was in prison. And the response simply is, didn't do it, didn't do it. Very few of us ever intend to end up where we have. And we never really think we deserve to be in the tough situations that we sometimes find ourselves in. And you may be right, but who cares? How we got where we are today really isn't that much of an issue. The real issue is, are we going to survive the situation we find ourselves in? Are we going to make a difference where we are today? That's the big question. Four of the most powerful books of the New Testament were actually written from a jail cell. They are called the prison letters of the Apostle Paul. Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon, all very powerful books, all written from a jail cell. And so we are going to begin a series talking about the lessons the Apostle Paul learned and what he wrote from the jail cell. What are some of the lessons that we can learn from the Apostle Paul? The first one would be never forget who you are. Paul in jail never forgot who he was. In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 1 and in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 1, in both occasions, Paul begins his letters by saying, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. Paul understood that while he may be in jail, he was still an apostle of God, and he was a messenger from God and for God. In Philippians chapter 1, it starts out by saying, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ. Paul never forgot who he was. We have to remind ourselves regularly who we are in Christ Jesus, regardless of our situations. Your circumstances do not change your identity. You are a child of God. You are an heir of God, a joint heir with Christ. 
You are blood-bought, spirit-anointed, sealed, and sanctified. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead still works in your life, regardless of your situation. Just because you're going through a difficult time right now, those things, your identity does not change. Just because some people look down on you, the truth of who you are doesn't change. Don't allow your circumstances to mold you or to shape who you are or to cause you to doubt your identity in Christ Jesus. Joseph may have been thrown into a pit, but he knew who he was. His coat of many colors may have been stripped off his body, but he knew that God's plan for his life was still intact. Never forget who you are and who you belong to. You are a child of God. Another lesson Paul understood was that he saw his situation from God's point of view. Paul never saw himself as a prisoner of Rome. He never saw himself as a prisoner of Caesar. In Philemon chapter 1, he says that he was a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Caesar and Rome had no power over him. They could not touch him except that God allowed him to serve in that particular place. Do you remember in John chapter 18 where Jesus is being questioned by Pilate and Pilate asks the question, don't you realize I have power either to free you or to crucify you? And Jesus answered in verse 11, you would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Jesus understood his situation from God's point of view. Paul understood his situation from God's point of view. Paul understood that God had a plan and that it was God's plan that counted. In Philippians chapter 2, we read, Therefore, my dear friends, as you've always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good pleasure. God is still at work in your life. He understood that God had a plan. What is happening to you today is not a surprise. God is still at work. It's not some fluke of nature. Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 1, In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything according to the plan, according to uh, the conformity and with a purpose of his will, who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. Did you get that? God works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. God is working out his plan in your life. Thirdly today, and the last thing we'll talk about today, is that God has a plan for you and God, pardon me, three, two, one. Three, two, one. What is happening to you is not a surprise to God. It's not a fluke of nature. Paul understood that God had a plan. In Ephesians 1, Paul writes from the jail cell, In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we who were the first to put our hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. Did you get that? From jail, Paul writes that God works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. God is still at work in your life, and we must never forget that. 
Finally today, Paul never forgot who was in charge and who was really in control. In Ephesians chapter 1, verses 17 to 23, we read this. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and anointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Paul understood that even though Jesus was in a grave, the power of the Holy Spirit was at work and it raised him from the dead and seated him in heavenly places. Paul understood that everything comes under the feet of Jesus. Paul understood plainly that God was in complete control. God was in charge. You know, many times we end up in situations that we never intended to end up in. But we must never forget who we are in Christ Jesus. We must never forget that God is working in our lives for good. And we must never forget that God is in control, not just when things are going great, but when things are difficult, God is in control. Even when we feel stuck and imprisoned, God is in control. Even when we see no way out, God is working his plan for his purpose. Paul may have been locked away in a jail cell. He may have worn chains of, of bondage. He may have felt like he was imprisoned and would never get out and that God had forgotten him. But God had a plan for his life. And in many ways, while his freedom to work or to go about in this physical life was very real and had been taken away from him, yet he knew that he was free in Christ Jesus. The Bible says, he whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Maybe today you feel like you're in bondage to fears, to habits, to situations that you never intended to be in. Today I want to remind you, the scripture says that he whom the sun sets free is free indeed. God came to set the captive free, the Bible says, and God wants to work deliverance in your life. 
Maybe it's sin that you are still a captive to, a slave to. The Bible says that your sins can be forgiven and you can find freedom in Christ. Some of you are watching today and you are bound by addictions and you say there's no way out. But I want to encourage you today and tell you that God came to set you free. And God wants to do that even today. Would you bow with me in prayer? Father God, I thank you that in Christ Jesus, we find complete freedom. The man that you set free, the woman that you set free, the young person that you set free is free indeed. And so I pray today for the person watching today who feels like they are in bondage, who feels like they are a slave, who feels like they are carrying chains around with them every day, stuck in situations they never intended to be in. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus today that your Holy Spirit will even now reach to that person and help them to know that in Christ they can be set free. Today, may this be the day when we ask that simple prayer, Lord Jesus, come into my life, set me free in the power of the Holy Spirit and help us to believe that indeed today that will take place even as we reach out to you in faith. We ask this in the name of our precious Savior, Jesus. Amen. If you prayed that prayer today, I would love for you to let me know. Uh, text me at the number 400-431, pardon me, 431-400-9585. It'll be on your screen in just a few moments. And you can let us know that uh, you prayed that prayer today. We have some information we'd love to send you. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Oh